for joining me this afternoon for our second um, in a three-part series about herbs, cooking with herbs and what to do with herbs. So last week, if you were here last week, uh, or if you weren't, now you can find out what we did last week, we planted herbs. So we took both seeds and um, already started plants and either planted the seeds or moved the small itty bitty plants to a bigger pot. And this is, so this is the basil seeds. And I'm gonna come up close so you guys can see this. But um, this is how I used to create a little greenhouse. And if you can see in there, um, we've got some little basil seedlings started. So that's what we did last week, is we started to plant um, plant some seedlings. You wanna keep these in the house uh, for now until they get a little bit bigger. So that was last week. So today we're talking about specifically how to cook with the herbs. And herbs, you know, it used to be, you went to the grocery store and you got, you know, a jar of herbs and that's how you cooked. Um, some people who were really fancy, you know, they had their fresh herbs, um, or if you were lucky enough to have a garden. Uh, but now having fresh herbs is not nearly as, um, what is the word, uh, I guess intimidating as I, I feel like maybe it used to be. You know, people realizing now that, oh, you know, I can just have this, this pot of basil on my windowsill or out of my patio, and it's really easy to have access uh, to a variety of fresh herbs. Uh, no matter where you live. Uh, so, so like I said, it used to be the dried herbs and the fresh. Now there's a bunch of stuff in between as well. So we can still uh, get a lot of dried stuff. Um, we can still plant herbs in our kitchen, in our garden, wherever we want to. But now uh, we can go to the grocery store, say we just don't have the time to actually do the planting. Um, most grocery stores sell these great little um, you know, packages of fresh herbs. So this is a fresh herb that you can use um, in all kinds of things. A lot of stores now also sell, um, so this, they call it freeze-dried, which I personally think uh, that these freeze-dried ones are sort of uh, a step up in terms of freshness from the dried herbs. Uh, they just smell, um, smell stronger and uh, they still have more of that green color uh, that herbs have. I feel like a lot of dried herbs are, are much more brown than green. So I love this freeze-dried freeze, freeze dried, um, option, especially for some of my favorite herbs, like I love chives. I can dump chives on everything. So I love having that strong flavor available. Um, another option is, uh, so this is actually sold, it's funny, I find it in the produce department, even though it's in a jar, I find it in the produce department. Another thing that's in the produce department, but in the chilled case, uh, same place where you might find the packaged herbs, um, are these, which are called lightly dried herbs. This is not a promo, but this Gourmet Garden is the only brand I've ever seen of these. Uh, and if you open this container, these, you can just see how dark uh, and green those are, and they're much softer than a dried herb. Now they say on the package uh, that they last for, I think it says like four weeks or fresh for four weeks. I've had them just forever in the fridge. Um, not forever, but I've had them longer than four weeks and they were awesome. So I love these uh, for an herb that I just, I wanna add that flavor to, but it's not something I happen to grow or have fresh available. And yet another kind of herb available. Uh, now you're starting to see these herbs in a tube. Uh, so this one I bought was dill. But yeah, it's just, um, it's like a, a tablespoon of fresh dill uh, is a tablespoon of this. So you just, you know, squirt it out. It may not work in all recipes, but if you're especially just mixing the herb in or even cooking with the herb, you could just give a little, a little squirt of this. Uh, and this lasts um, in your refrigerator and it says, it says fresh for weeks. Um, and it gives a best by date. I bought it today and the best by date is September 19th. Uh, so this will last for a while. They also sell this with like garlic and lemongrass and, um, and ginger. For me, the ginger is really helpful because I hate grating ginger. So anyways, those are all of our options when it comes to cooking with herbs. You do want to use them slightly differently. So when we think about the dried herbs especially, 
to really get their flavor out, you want to add them at the beginning of your cooking. They're going to take a while to get those, um, those essential oils out. And what, you, what I always do, what you want to do, I should say, for those oils to bloom, um, I always, whenever I am adding dried herbs to something, I, I put whatever amount I'm going to use in my hand, and then I just rub it together. And I don't want basil everywhere, so we'll put it here. <laughs> um, and then, there you can see my notes now. But it really, it grinds it up fine, but more importantly, uh, it really brings out those oils that have sort of been, um, been locked away through the drying process. So it really um, makes the flavor come out. And I didn't say at the beginning, um, I know everyone is on chat, or um, on mute, sorry, but if you do have any questions as I'm talking, please put it in the chat open so I can, um, I can see that. Um, now, what I would also say is, um, like I said, the dried herbs storing, you don't want these necessarily near the heat. Um, it, certainly, it's convenient to have them stove to dump in, but that's the worst place to put them. So put them far, um, the far side of your kitchen from the stove. I actually have a weird setup where I have like a closet on the other side of my kitchen, and that's my pantry, so they're not even in near the heat. So that comes in really handy. So storing them away from heat is ideal because you don't want to spend, you know, six bucks for this jar and then have it go bad, uh, lose its potency or its flavor in a, in a few short, in a short time. Uh, now the fresh herbs. So the dried herbs you put in at the beginning and I would probably, um, I would most likely for these freeze dried herbs and for these herbs in a tube, um, I would put these in, I'm thinking these could go in any time, the beginning if you're sauteing something, but it wouldn't hurt to squeeze them in at the end and, and stir them through as well. Um, the freeze dried, I, again, I think I could go either way, beginning or the end, but if you're actually using uh, the fresh herb, so if you have this dill, um, I actually went to my neighbor's house with her permission and picked this oregano today, and if you wanna tune in next week, we're talking about preserving herbs. So I'm gonna use this oregano, we're gonna dry it over this week and, and show you how to do that. But anyways, if you're using the fresh herb like this, you wanna put that in right at the end because um, the cooking process will almost sort of, um, destroy isn't the right word, but will really mild, you're not gonna notice that flavor because the oils are already so fresh and out there, it doesn't have to cook for long. Uh, and what I would do, uh, get this leaf off here, what I would do with the fresh is similar to what I do with the dried, is I would sort of, we call it bruising, just basically rub those leaves together a bit, and it really, really brings out the flavor, and then I would add them. Um, and, and if you're going to chop it, you know, obviously you're going to chop your leaves, but I would sort of bruise them all in my hand a little and then chop them up. Um, sometimes the chopping process does a, a bit of bruising as well. So those are all of our different kinds of herbs. So now what I want to do is show you a couple simple recipes of how to cook with fresh herbs. Uh, the first one I want to make is a cucumber salad. And I have sent all of these recipes uh, to Harvard Pilgrims. Um, all of these, there's two. Um, so you can access them if you want. But I will uh, also tell you what I'm doing as I'm doing it. So the first recipe for cucumber salad uh, starts with a little bit of rice vinegar or cider vinegar. You could do a, a regular white vinegar, you could do a red wine vinegar, but the, the rice and the cider vinegars are really the sweetest and the mildest of the vinegars. So they really are nice and light with the salad. So we're just gonna start with spoons of, let's see, one of the vinegar, there we go. And then we're gonna put the lid on so we don't spill it. And then we add, so we're gonna put that to the side for a moment while we chop our herbs. So this one calls for two teaspoons of chopped fresh parsley. So for the parsley, I'm actually gonna use my little garden gourmet, what it's called, gourmet garden. Um, and these are sort of already chopped. So I am basically going to grab my, my measuring spoon. 
And the cool thing about these is they're just so easy to measure and they are pre-chopped already. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna scoop uh, two teaspoons here, roughly, in my hand. Into my lid. Because if I don't put a lid on it, I will spill it. And I'm not gonna kill them, but I am gonna rub them a little bit as they're, as they're falling in there. So that's my parsley. Now I'm gonna grab this dill. So we need two teaspoons of the fresh dough. Why did I shut this before? I don't know. All right, I am gonna say I can probably get, is that gonna be two teaspoons? We're gonna try this. And I just like to, let's see, you know, get the big, peel the leaves, oh, sorry, the leaves off the big stem. I don't like the big, the big stems. They're not fun to bite into. So we'll put those to the side, sort of pull these, these leaves off. And the thing with, I mean, dill, it's so, you know, light and feathery. I don't really need to do a lot of chopping, but I like to, I like to mince them up. Make sure I throw the right thing in the discard pile there. All right, and I'm just gonna estimate here. So there is, where did I put my big knife? All right. And we're just gonna, just a little bit of back and forth. Nice and simple. And I'm gonna say, where did I put my spoon? Let's see, see how I estimated. So there's roughly one teaspoon. Oh, I didn't smush it. And there is our second. So I did a pretty good job estimating what a couple teaspoons are. So rub, get our dill flavor in there. Uh, and you know what, you don't like dill. Dill goes really well with cucumber, but you don't like dill, you don't like parsley, change it up, use basil and oregano, make it an Italian type of um, cucumber salad, add some tomatoes, add some onions. That would be delicious, I think. Oregano, basil, tomatoes, onions, and cucumber. I think that would be really, really good. Um, we are going to use a teaspoon of garlic powder. I always leave these shakers on because I think one of these days I might want to shake it out, but I never do. I always take the shaker off to spoon it out. We're gonna, my bowl is right over there, so we're gonna pop that in. Again, this would go great if we did that Italian style salad. And a wee bit of sugar for our a tablespoon of sugar is going to go in. We're just making, we're basically making like a mild little vinaigrette here without the oil. Uh, you don't, you know, you're watching your sugar, don't want to have sugar, you can certainly cut that down. This is going to make a fair amount of food, so it's not like that tablespoon is going to be, um, you're getting all of that sugar. The last thing, it calls for half a teaspoon of salt. I tend to just put a, a pinch in there. Again, Leave out the salt if you need to, maybe put in, in um, some pepper instead if you want. And now we're just whisking all of that together. So that was super easy. So now the hard part um, is we're just gonna take, oops, hold on, dropped my bowl, my garbage bowl here from a peel. I got an English cucumber um, and I'm just gonna peel this and chop it. These babies are just so long. You don't want to peel it, fine, wash it. Don't, you know, you don't have to peel it. You could also leave the peel on, run a fork along it and make those nice little grooves that are so pretty. Um, but I just, personally, I just don't like biting into the peel. So I always peel my cukes. And it peels nice and easy. Not like trying to peel a squash or something. Get that all peeled. Oh, done with that. Um, I also personally like to just chop the ends off. I don't know why, but I do. All right, so that is all of our, our utensils. And we've got a long one here, so we'll cut it in half. What I like to do just to make it even, is sort of chop it in half in half again and I just line these guys up and just now 
like that, as big or small as you want it. But now, I mean, instead of cutting each part I cut, and basically all these cubes just get dumped right in the bowl. And this is something you're gonna wanna make earlier in the day, so if you're gonna have it at night, um, you could even make it uh, the day before, so you're having company or you wanted it for, for lunch, uh, you could make it the day before. And that's basically all you do. It's really a nice thing to do in the summertime, I think. And if you're somebody that has a garden, if you grow herbs, if you grow cucumber, this is a great thing to do with all those 8 million cucumbers that we start to, to get once they do come in. You know, it's like, it's just leaves, it's just leaves, and then all of a sudden you've got 50 cucumbers. Check and I don't see any questions yet, so feel free if you have any or comments or anything. All right, all of those babies in there. And we just give a little mix. Get the cucumber soaked in all that uh, yummy vinaigrette that we made. And like I said, I just think this is so, so pretty by itself, but imagine some, uh, some purple onion or some bright red tomatoes, uh, if you like those, those items. Um, and that's it. So we got the, the pretty dark green herbs, the light green cucumber, and that is our cucumber salad. So now we set this to the side, we have that for later. And the next recipe, the second recipe I'm gonna make is going to be a nice mint lemonade. Um, I wanted to find something to do with some fresh mint um, and something a little different. So we're gonna make lemonade. So what we do is first we have to make a sugar syrup. And this is how, when you wanna make something like a fresh lemonade or a fresh limeade, if you just were to dissolve the sugar in the water, it sort of ends up being a little grainy. Uh, so what you really want to do is make what is called a sugar syrup. And you can make them, uh, they're all different sweetnesses. This one happens to be um, half sugar to water. So the recipe, I actually cut the recipe in half, but what the recipe called for was a quarter cup of sugar and a half a cup of water. And you just simmer it for, I, mean, I don't know, a couple minutes. I tend to put it on very low, walk away, do things. I come back, I give it a stir, the sugar's dissolved and I'm good. So I did that and I let it cool. So that is the first step. Second step is we gotta get the, the juice out of these lemons. And I got myself a pitcher to do that into. So like I said, I cut the recipe in half. Um, I will be doing three lemons, but the recipe, if you're making the whole thing, um, calls for six lemons. So we will just pop this in here. There we go. Doesn't want to stay. And this, I mean, you could do this as well with, um, oops, sorry, with uh, limes, fresh lime juice, or you could make a limeade, you could make a lemon limeade, half and half. Uh, I really like that. My lemons are a bit difficult today. So all we do, and, one thing I also could have done um, is, uh, if I wanted to, I didn't think of it, sometimes I try and think of it, before you squeeze the lemons, uh, sometimes I will, I will zest them just to have fresh lemon zest, uh, and then I can store that in the freezer for whenever I, whenever I want it. Someone had a question, are there any herbs that freeze well? There are, that's one of the ways we are going to talk about preserving herbs next week. Uh, so you will have to tune in, same bat channel, same bat time, um, and see all the different ways of preserving herbs. So that's an excellent question. Oops. All right. So, oops, one more lemon to go. I don't know why I didn't cut all three of them at the same time. Okay. And of course, let's see. It's just... Oh, that was a juicy one. And when you're looking for lemons, 
um, try and get the ones you can feel when you're sort of picking out lemons. Some of them have a smoother, thinner skin, and some of them seem like they have a very rough, thick skin. You're gonna get the mo most juice out of the thinner, some thinner, smoother ones. So try and get those ones if you're looking for juice. So now, basically what we do is we wanna make sure we don't have any seeds in there. We pour our, our lemon juice right in there and again so i'm having the recipe so i have um it you're supposed to do the juice of six lemons and four cups of water i have two cups of water to add to my three lemons and this is one of those things you can add um add water and ice to get to whatever level of sweetness and, and tartness that you want now we add in our Our simple syrup and what I like to do well I like to do it but also because I forgot to bring a spoon over a lid on and give it a little swirl all right so that is our basic lemonade you can store this in the fridge for a few weeks um, or I'm sorry a few days uh, that's basically your lemonade base now you want to have a glass of lemonade you want to have a glass of mint lemonade. This actually happens to be an herb I grow in my yard, is mint. Um, so you take a few leaves. So this is like a, a spearmint. I love spearmint. Hmm. All right. And what we're going to do is muddle them. So the recipe says to muddle them with a pestle. I don't have a pestle, but I got a nice teaspoon. So basically, you're doing the same thing that we're doing when we're cooking and rubbing those herbs together. We're just sort of getting out all those oils so we're pressing it. And then we're just going to add a wee bit of the lemonade just to give, give something here to get those oils out into. And we muddle a little bit more. All right. And then All we do is to serve it, this is how you'd serve it. So you store the big container in the fridge. Somebody wants a glass. Um, oops. I didn't, um, <laughs> I forgot. I was going to add water. Um, so you just muddle it and then you pour in, you know, as much as you, much as you want. Uh, oh, if I had saved any of my, my big leaves, I could have put a nice little mint leaf on there, but I forgot. And cheers, there is your mint lemonade. Mm, perfect, a little bit tart, I like that. All right, so those are our two recipes. Now what I wanna talk briefly about, I'm gonna hop up and uh, share my screen just to talk about um, what different herbs, there it is, um, sort of work with different kinds of foods. So, uh, this is also something that I sent to Harvard Pilgrim, so you can, uh, you can get that if you'd like it. Um, but these sheets just go through some of the basic herbs. Um, and I really like this because sometimes we want to cook something and you know, what's it going to go with? I'm growing these new things. I'm doing something new. Um, how can I make that work? So basil, basil I think is one of the easiest. It goes very well. You know, we think Italian foods. Um, you know, pizza sauces, uh, pasta sauces, bruschetta, things like that. Um, basil is a really, a really fun one uh, to cook with. Um, rosemary, the thing about rosemary, it goes really well with meats, uh, almost any meats, chicken, lamb, beef. Um, my thing with rosemary is I just hate, I love the flavor of it and the scent of it, but I hate biting into those little pine needles. Uh, so I like to have a little grinder for that one. Sage, sage is that quintessential, this is the, the flavor of Thanksgiving. Um, it goes very well with chicken and turkey and, and other poultry, um, but can also be made, um, a lot of people like to make like a pasta dish with like a sage butter. So basically you just sort of melt the butter, add a little sage, let the, the oils in that sage flavor the butter, um, and that's the base of your, your pasta sauce. So that's a really fun thing uh, to do with sage. 
Parsley, parsley goes with everything. I mean, what don't you put parsley in? I feel like it goes with, um, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You can put it in salads. You can put it um, into, you know, breakfast omelets. You can put, I, I put it in our cucumber salad. So there's lots of things that go with that. Um, thyme, um, I'm not a huge fan of thyme uh, personally, um, but it's uh, very, uh, Greek Mediterranean kinds of things. So lamb, uh, it goes well with um, different vegetables. You can make a nice little Greek marinade. Uh, mint is also sort of very, I think of that when I think Mediterranean, Middle Eastern foods. Um, it goes in, you know, tabbouleh, things like that. We made it in our lemonade, but it, it's also great with desserts. Mint, mint goes yummy, especially if you're talking about chocolate and mint. Um, oregano, Again, another Greek one. Apparently the Greek people have a lot of herbs. Um, but this is very uh, traditional in, in um, pizza, goes with eggplants and zucchinis, uh, those types of things. Uh, and then of course we have our dill that we use today. Um, most common use of dill is, you know, when you pickle things or make like a, almost like this cucumber salad that we made, but also goes great with tuna and salmon and seafood. Um, and if you like tzatziki, which is, again, Greek, um, it's like the base flavor in tzatziki, which is a great cucumber-based uh, dip. So those are some really great things that you can do um, with dill. I don't know if anybody else has any questions. That was basically that sheet. So we sort of went through the, the whole thing, got mine all wet. Um, but you guys will have access to that. So I just sort of wanted to go through it quick, quickly. Um, if anyone else has any questions, I am happy to answer them. But something also, if you're really into um, flavors or you're trying to learn more about flavors, this is a book that I got a long time ago. It's called um, Culinary Artistry. And my favorite section of this book, I have it bookmarked, and it basically, in a much more elaborate detail, goes through a whole bunch. I know you guys can't read them, but you can see how many words are on the page at least. Um, a whole bunch of different herbs and spices and what other spices and herbs they pair well with. And I think that's fascinating. If you're trying, you know, if you're experimenting and trying new recipes, uh, you're, you know, some, some people are just, I'll mix it up and see what happens. Some people are a little bit more cautious and want to make sure that they're not going to mess it up totally. Um, and that is a great resource. So again, it's called Culinary Artistry. It's a big book. Um, lots of cul culinary and cooking tips in it, but that's my favorite page. Um, but that is basically it. Do it. It doesn't seem that we have any other questions. Uh, if we do, I'm happy to, to answer them. Um, I will sit here for a minute with my, with my lemonade. Um, but yeah, let me know if you have any questions and please tune in next week. Uh, like I said, same time, same place. And we will talk about what to do with all those herbs now that you've grown them and they're, you know, overflowing in the garden and the patio and the, um, your windowsill. Mm. Yeah, that's good. I think it's so fancy too, to just have the pretty leaves in there. And I, uh, thought about it before I killed my lemons. I could have sliced the lemon and put it on the, the side of the glass too. I always think of those things too late. Thank you very much. And I will say goodbye until next week.